Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson again, and in this video we are going to discuss the glide. So this past summer, we did our second annual Arte Summer Throws Tour. We hit six cities, and one of the things, of course, we do is we, do, we discuss the glide. And one of the key things is what we do in, with the throws and the throwing chain reaction system is that there's two seconds. So two seconds is just such a fast period of time. So how are you gonna work on all these things? You can't, right? So how do we break down that throw? So in this video, we're gonna discuss those six pillars and how basically the, the glide works. And one of the things that we always talk about when I'm at all these camps and I'm explaining these things to everybody is that the glide is tough. Make no mistake, it is less complex, I think, in nature than the rotational throw. However, it is a very special, talented, gifted athlete that's going to throw really far with the glide. The glide also is very unforgiving. Because it's a simpler technique, that means a couple little things go wrong and the whole throw is wrong. Screw up your chain reaction, you're going to screw up your whole throw. And that's the whole point. So before, as we start to dive in and we help you kind of better understand the glide, keep that in mind. A little less complicated technically, definitely tough to execute at a very high level. It requires a big, powerful, fast, dynamic, strong athlete to throw very far, but it doesn't mean you can't maximize your abilities and throw as far as you can possibly throw with the glide. So what we're going to do is go through the six pillars of the throwing chain reaction for the glide shot and a couple of simple tips to help you throw farther and produce better training with the glide. The core thing that we teach, we teaching, I'm going to throw like I'm throwing this way, and when we're, for sake of simplicity, we have have the setup and one of the key things is that trigger is really important we see some kids they bend over one of the first things we don't want to do in pillar one we want to set the right angle and we have to set our hinge and our load leg so that's what we do in pillar one pillar two is what we refer to as loading and coiling we're gonna get loaded up younger throwers I always talk about we want to have a higher range we don't need to get super low you see some of the pros and they get way down here those are pros it's taken them years to get to that point so what we're gonna do is we're going to have a range and it's really important for coaches and young throwers to understand if you see David Storrell, Thomas Machewski or you see Valerie Adams and you see them and you see how dynamic and loaded and all these cool things that they're doing it's taken years to get to that point when you're a beginning thrower it's really important to just understand how to set the proper line so when we set here and we set our pillar two that's our loading and coiling we're loading up so that we can push and then pillar three is what we call drop and slide so we're going to push and we're going to be able to drop down so the hips and the chest dropping on the angle so that's our pillar three so we're here pillar two pillar three is basically here and then that's what's getting us to our pillar four driving and kicking really important that's how we're going to be moving into the power position and setting that glide line in one two and three so four five we can go react again we're still going to lock down power like we do and then we're going to be driving the hips up, up into the throw and driving up and feeling that type of motion. Now notice it's a very linear motion. Carrying the shot in the right position is super critical for that. We talk about that a lot of times people come in. In fact, today I had a new athlete come in and the, and the athlete is holding, doing the glide with the elbow up here and the elbow needs to be down here so that we can be in this position and we're gonna be able to hit that nicer elevated line. If it's here, there's more of this kind of artificial arcing lift and that's not gonna work. Even if I'm here, that's not gonna work. That elbow needs to be here because, because it's a straight line, this comes out of the way. So that all being said, that's leading you to your pillar six. So if I'm throwing that elbows in the way, we get the high arm, we get the hip underneath, that's our pillar six, and we're driving up into the shot and feeling that nice linear delivery. So this is how you work your six positions. And what we do is what we have with our six pillars, we can work on pillar one, two, three, four, five, six. That's how we work our drills. And then we work what we call as pillar connection. We'll save that for another video. Now, here's a couple of key tips. I always tell people when it comes to the glide shot, don't bend at the waist. That's the kiss of death. You screw up the alignment angles and you change change the trigger on your pillar one and it becomes very difficult to set up a dynamic throw and move with speed. One of the other things is, is the arbitrary kick leg dominant where we're not understanding the action between the drive leg. So the kick and the drive working together, that's how we create that double extension. So you want to avoid bending over and you want to avoid 
the pull in and just being kick leg side dominant. The last thing that we wanna really avoid, like we said, is that shoulder, that hand carry position. That elbow should be here. If you, again, we look at our top throwers in the world, we look at all the best gliders, cause it seems like gliders on the women's side. Let's look at Gong. Let's look at the number two and then the number three woman in the world was a rotational thrower. So there seems to still be more gliders on the women's side than on the men's side. And I suspect that over the coming years that that's gonna be changing just like it has in the men's shot. So at any rate, take a peek at those throwers and look at what I'm saying. Hopefully those that structure works and those three tips work for you. If you'd like detailed information that starts to discuss the differences between the discus and the shot or more information, check out our website, airtatethrowsnation.com. We've got a whole bunch of free resources there for throwers and you can get more information. And remember again, like, comment, subscribe. Give that subscribe button a nice big hit and thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.